Are you looking to become a writer? Have the next song of ice and fire, but perhaps won't take 50 years to finish it, lose focus like a fat kid in ADHD trapped in a hostess factory when it hits TV? Perhaps it's the next great children's book. Those little jam-handed lunatics do love their pictures. If you're interested in being published, then Crapco's got the publishing arm for you. We here at Crapco have always supported the arts. We throw money, largely for tax purposes, at all sorts of things, and one of those things is supporting arts, like our yearly sidewalk chalk painting that we hold in the rainiest parts of Washington State outside of Seattle. Ten years of going, ten years of cancellations. The kids love it. Or the local book fair, which, I'm told, millions of nerds, I mean kids, love across the country. It's with this in mind that we happily introduce Crapco Publishing of the arts and other stuff. We'll edit, publish, and work with you. Sorting through the garbage of the mind to find what'll make you the most money. And us the most money. With our generous 90% cut contract to a life of sequels, you'll be living the dream in no time. After all, doing what you like is like never having to work, which is why we don't pay you to actually work. Crapco Publishing. If you can imagine it, we can steal it. You're listening to RPMMO Radio. Um, does internet porn know you're cheating on it? Where entertainment and roleplay in MMORPGs have little hybrid mutant babies. Make a note of this. Dishonor on you! Dishonor on your cow! Dishonor on your whole family! And now, here's your hosts, Ashen Phoenix, Siv, Jazz, Strafe, and Yunfe. Everybody f*** off. We, 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 we need to go on a quick adventure. Hello, role players, and welcome to RP MMO Radio, episode 99, just one short of 100. For those of you that are amazing at math like I am, author of your own destiny. I uh, appreciate everybody for tuning in over at twitch.tv slash Radio. I, of course, am your host, and with me today is the crew, Jazz, Sib, Strafe, Yunfei, and a special guest, Strafe's mom, Mama Dyerfear. I don't know if that's what we'll probably Woo-hoo! call her the whole time, but that's what he always refers to her as. So welcome. It's good to have you here. Welcome. Thank you. I'm I happy was- to be here. Yeah. She Wait. is the mother of trolls. We love her all the same. <laughs> so would you like it's me It's always to... a good time when she'd show up. Yes. You want me to call you Mama Dire Fear or just by your name? How you... How... I guess I probably should have asked you that beforehand. <laughs> well, my real name is Janice Ayers. Um, I've been called different Chala Doll. Chalice. I have been called Mama Dire Fear. <laughs> Or just Mama, or the troll. I've even been accused of being uh, a Vulcan and a dark elf. So you can take your pick. Oh, j- Jazz, you, you forgot you, Romulan, but I digress. Uh, I was going to say you left one out. The Romulans, those are good for nothing. Roms, yeah. I oh, will just go with. I guess we'll just go with Mama Dyerfear then, because uh, that's how Strafe always refers to you as. So. We'll just stick with that. That is a laundry list of names, though. I can feel the troll, though, mm. because I, every now and then I get that one. Well, she raised one, oh, so yes. <clears throat> she raised three. Yes. True. But one is king among all. <laughs> the eldest. <laughs> the eldest Gormal. That's right. We can't let him in the studio again, though, man. We don't. I don't no, have the same we're still picking maggots out of the. We car couldn't. From we the couldn't last get time. a whole hot Jessica, which means if he shows up, ain't nothing we can do to get him out from like sliming the whole. Yeah, we got halflings way. we can throw at him. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I mean nobody will miss them. They're not even real people. So, but uh, no, she's. Uh, we're, we're we're happy to have her here because uh, as it happens with a lot of role players, I I don't know how many of you know wanted to to write books and get published and this and that. And the other thing, and it's it's always a good dream to have, but it's also not always the easiest thing to know where to even start. And as she has had a public bo- published book, uh, Surviving the Waning, 
the Ice uh, Icing Wood Chronicles Book One. So she's wrote an uh, an art by somebody I think we know too. Some some uh, Antoni Stogner, I think. I don't know. It sounds <laughs> sounds like a weirdo, but uh, our very own. I got so weird. I don't know. You know what? It's funny is I I I clicked on that and I I remembered seeing other pictures that you've done strafe and i was like that is definitely yeah. his art style yeah i can see it i can see it that was back in my art school days for sure yeah oh <laughs> yeah but you, everybody has that like yunfei when yunfei draws stuff it's i can it's she's got a it's a style to it there's just something yeah. about it's like handwriting it really is it's strange i don't know but then again like i guess writing styles do pretty that too cool. yeah well it's like we've had with jazz when somebody comes in and their writing style is so so similar she's like that's so and so are you sure <laughs> i know yep she's like the master of that by the way oh yeah, yeah. She's very good <laughs> but uh no i'm glad to glad to have you here uh we'll just go over a little bit of a couple things uh first off how's everyone doing have a good week it's um it's a uh, is this labor day labor day weekend this is, is labor day weekend. Yes, it, yeah. it is indeed yeah this is the force you to take a day off and steal your pto weekend week long weekend for me right so. <laughs> or what yeah sorry yeah yeah we have yeah. to take the day off we don't have a choice um and then they charge me eight hours of pto out of my pool of pto to pay for it i don't have a choice what but that's the whole point of labor day is yeah, I know, right? Ironic, right? They missed that point. I, I did try to make that at the last big team meeting, and they all looked at me very blankly. So it wasn't even getting. I was like, "Never mind." And I this said, "This is down. why communism fails every time." Right, Strafe? That's right. <laughs> Better dead than red. <laughs> that is awful. I mean, we get That's it terrible. off, but we we pay for it in the fact that mail doesn't stop just because we're not there, and it's there waiting yeah. for us the next day. Well, see, that's the thing I've made to people is that in in the big wigs, you know, by making us take a day off, they are making, I mean, all the office people totally don't care if they get the day off. That's great. I don't care, mm -hmm. but we're out in the field. And when we don't show up, our clients go, um, without off kilter and it <laughs> takes a week to get them back. Yeah. Well, yeah, you're again. dealing with people. Mine's just garbage bills yeah. <laughs> and Amazon packages. But I mean, it's the same basic idea is that the, it doesn't stop just because I'm not there. And then I have to fire, put fires out until, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, it you gets spend, caught up again. Yeah. Good. But yeah. to answer your question, it's, I don't know about you guys, but I had a tiring week and worked two 11 hour shifts. Ugh. And Ew. even the shifts were regular. were just like devoid of sleep. It was weird. Yeah. yeah. I worked a long week too. It was My a little more was... than normal yeah. 40. My week was crap from the get go. Monday, mm. uh -oh. I got to drive my little mail truck with no power steering to full body workouts. Yeah, oh. I was almost in tears by the time I got home. I was, and I went in the next day and was like, "If the truck isn't fixed, I'm going home. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can't do it again. I did it yesterday. I can't do it today. Nope. Yeah, I can do it. And those mail trucks, they're the, the the actual boxy ones you see, their axles in the front are shorter than the ones in the back so that we have better steering. You know, we can make sharper turns, but without the power steering, that's a lot of work. And I think mm -hmm. with the power steering Yikes. being out, I think it was actually working against her. Like she was it wasn't just like the old nineteen sixties, you know, Chevrolet mm -hmm. where yeah, it was tough, but as long as you were moving it steered just fine. This was like ah, uh -uh. <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm gonna make you pay. Oh, it was awful. I actually had to go to the chiropractor this week. And, Ouch. Yeah, because oh I was goodness. like, I was in so much pain. I was like, I can't figure it. Wednesday, I was like, I don't know why I'm hurting so bad. Why am I in so much pain? And I was like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <It's a super laughs> no power steering. Those yeah. patches. Yeah. Oh. But no, they did fix it Tuesday. So the rest of the week got better, but it was so rough. At Monday, I was just like, I just wanted to cry. I was like, never again. Nope. Nope. Yeah. How about you, Mama Dyer? For have a good week. We'll bring. We'll just bring you. You're just. Oh, it's the show always now. a good week when my son comes home. I, I try uh -huh. to fix him up with all kinds of goodies to eat, and so far he had a big pot of homemade beef stew with uh, cornbread and some special rice that I fixed up. Oh. Uh. Yummy. I mean, and I'm not bragging about it, but the girl <laughs> is bragging about it. You know, I don't try to spread around this propaganda. I don't want people knowing. You just don't want to share, is what you're saying. Well, yeah, you just you don't know. want to share. It is what it is, you know. <laughs> so what I'm hearing is if 
me and Ashen show up down there, we we're not getting nothing. No, no, you will. Not if he's there. Au contraire. I like, will. I will <laughs> put out a spread for it. There you go. She's Texan. She. They don't. It's 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 like the Asian culture. You come over. Oh, you're gonna leave full and uh, wanting and happy. wanting more. Yeah, it, fat it, and it, happy. I like you, that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You left any other way? It's on you, man. Yep. <laughs> That's right. Because I put I put it on the table. If you don't eat it, it's not my fault. Yeah. You only <laughs> ate five pounds. Was it not good enough for you? You know. <laughs> Close mouth, don't get fed. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Oh, that's awesome. That's good. Well, okay. That's good. I'm glad everyone had a good week. I'm looking forward to a nice long weekend. Some of us more forced than others. Uh, of course, another the other people that I, I know I saw a lot on my uh, my other guild, that are they, they were griping about the holiday because they get to work through it. And it's like, yeah, well, that would suck. That, that does and one of them works at a casino. Jazz, what are casinos like on holiday weekends? So they're, I'm sure they're, <laughs> I'm sure they're mostly quiet and dead. My husband's working right now. He worked Thursday. <clears throat> he worked Friday. He's working tonight. He's made a lot of money. <laughs> right. But, I'm but sure he's like, like I what? swear to God, everyone's intelligence flies out the window. And there's probably only like seven or eight people there, I'm sure. A uh, hundred, yeah. <laughs> oh, hundred. Oh, yeah, I was close. <laughs> hundred people. Yeah. And it's a, apparently a band that really shouldn't be a band. So he has to listen to it all weekend. So oh, so like ninety nine percent of all bands that play it. Yeah, places. it's yeah. really not good. I know which one he's talking about. They played a lot when I was there because the old people love them, and what they're up? just not quite on key. So it's <laughs> oh, <Aerosmith. laughs> and really really loud. So it's like oh, she... hey, hey, don't mm-hmm. be down in Aerosmith. Got Aerosmith there. I'll the Walking Zombies. <laughs> Mostly country music. They play country oh. and waltz, and sometimes at the same time. That's that's odd. Qual- All yeah. right then. <laughs> Walt Waltry? They're playing Waltry. Yeah, it was it's always really the one time when I was a cashier there and and I just sat there and I was listening and one of the guys come the security guys come over. He goes, "You look like you're in pain." And it's like I'm trying to decide if this is a country song I know or a waltz. And he goes, "It's both. We win." He walks away. <laughs> All I saw in my head when she said that was if you drink, don't drive. Do the watermelon curl. Now, waltz. <laughs> there we go. Exactly. That's kind of what it's like. <laughs> they have uh, a, uh, what's that? The thing you push together and pull apart. An accordion. Accordion. accordion? They, had an, they have an accordion, and they play it in every song. I mean, no matter whether there's an, instead of a, instead of a uh, piano. Fiddle. Oh, a fiddle. Instead of a fiddle, so they use an accordion. Polka? No. And it's just like, oh my god! This works great for Weird Al Yankovic. Nobody else should be playing an accordion. Yeah, no, this is polka. Weird. Yeah, polka never dies. Yeah, he gets a pass. <laughs> yeah, it was it was quite the first time that I saw it. My coworkers just said my face was priceless. I was like, do I hear an accordion? <laughs> you if mean you... are you rocking to an accordion? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh. And it was some old. Willie Nelson song and it was with the accordion and I was just like this hurts my brain. It's it sounds like people that maybe they thought Weird Al Yankovic was like a serious artist and thought you know what I dig this sound. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Yikes! Uh, all right, well let's go real quick uh, in what we've been doing in role play or in this case gaming. Um, and I know Mama Dyerfield, you may not may, may not be aware, but we have a tradition on this where um Sigh. The person that is the most sarcastic and speaks up out of turn <laughs> goes first. <laughs> and which of course story. just happened to be jazz today. <clears throat> uh-huh. Hmm. What? Yeah. I was just letting I was just letting our guests know that that's that's how things are picked. And since it you is a standing rule. Yeah, I mean. Uh-huh. I think so, the last one of the one of my favorites. Uh, my favorite rules in that vein is anybody whose name who rhymes with as gets to go first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, look, it's you, Jazz. Huh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, quite amazing. Okay, so, role play. Right. Um, I had a hellish week, but I did manage to still get some role play in. Um, Tuesday was poetry night, and I was there on Kia and got to interact with a lot of people. Um, part of the problem with ESO is I can't find random role play to save my nothing. <laughs> I've tried. I tried all week 
mm. at various times to go find random role play in Riften. I went to Wednesday. I went to, or uh, was it Friday? I think it was Wednesday. I went to, uh, what's the name of it? It's out in the middle of nowhere. Edge, not edge. Edge more territory. It, it is actually. It's why I don't usually go there. And there were three people there role playing. And I thought, all right, finally. And I, I stood there and they were talking and I was talking. And of course, both the Bosmer had horns because of course. Um, mm. But I sat there and, and started interacting with them. And the other guy sends me, says in parentheses, I don't mean to ignore you, dude, but this is our own private RP and you're not really welcome here. <laughs> Ooh. Wow. I was like, so why are you doing it in a public place? Yeah. Thanks, bye. And I walked away. I mean, I didn't say anything else. But it was just like, I'm I'm done. And I logged out. <laughs> uh. But, yeah. It's just, but Thursday was fun. We had our typical tavern guild night. And there was a lot of role play there, interactions back and forth. It was a lot of fun. And Telvani night was actually not a Telvani night. It was a inter-guild party, sort of. Um. So we had another guild called the Dorethy, House Dorethy, was there with some of their members. And then our members were there, mostly just the masters and mouths of Telvani. And we got to interact. So it was a lot of fun. And um, there was some spirited debate <laughs> that went well. I imagine so. Uh, because we had somebody there who's from the old servants guild. Um, mm. Oh, and Lord. So she was talking about how they make all these rules and it's not, and it was like, no, that's not actually how it works. And so Wolf, uh, Typhon and her got into a debate toward the end. It was really funny. So it was a lot of fun and I was really pleased to see it today was very busy for me. So I haven't been able, I did get some role play right before, right before I was like racing to get it done before this started, because the only time they could meet with my character was, today so mm. um Seldreni, uh the telvani uh met with the uh, lord and lady dorethy about sasher her son her secret son you know that nobody knows is her son <laughs> so i have this friend that i promised on her deathbed that i would keep track of and i kind of lost track of him and so i'm just checking in to see how he's doing Wait. it was a lot of fun so uh Are you dead yet <laughs> <laughs> so it was, technically it was, doing the job i'm trying to build rp with this new guild so i was really pleased that it went well like it did so that was really all though because my week was otherwise <clears throat> kind of thrown into frappe mode <laughs> right i didn't get much else done besides those things though so. yeah, that's all well and good it's nothing always... developmental wise i even went into tour and there was literally nothing going on so yeah it was just like, oh, all right, it's a wash. Let's just go do the planned RP things. So yeah, that is a bummer. With the the mega servers are really kind of a cool idea, but it doesn't. The instancing really kills it. It really makes things. It does, hard and to it, get to. it's it's great. Actually, according to like the raiders, they hate it. So apparently, it's bad for them too. Um, for some reason, although I would they think got, they would love it. They got more competition for zones. Oh, is that uh, it? Oh, yeah. Well, so partly, but if it's instance, then the, then that wouldn't be even a thing. So I'm not sure why oh. they waited. I wonder are some of I wonder if some of the raid zones aren't instanced. Maybe, maybe so. Or like maybe the, they're on a timer or something like that. I seem to remember something about a timer on some. Of the I don't know. Zones. All I know is that I, I hear a lot of people wishing they didn't have the mega servers that are raiders and and people that do a lot of the well, of course they're not called raiders. The people who do the trials in ESO, right. we call them raiders still because we're old school. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, That's shoot. right. Most of them do too. They because trialer sounds dumb. It does. It really does. <laughs> a trialer? Oh, what the hell trial. is that? Yeah. I so my trial of EQ one. So uh, I'm gonna need that code so I can keep being a trialer. Yeah. Don't yeah. Do that. Don't be that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so it went. It went. Um, they they don't like it any more than we do. But uh, most people that quest and just play the game right. seem to really enjoy it because it's easier to get the group finder to work like you want it to. And I understand that. But the rest of us hate it. Yeah, so. but there's also technology now like uh, like Final Fantasy 14. They're 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 servers. So they're server based, you know, Balmong's Balmong, yeah, right. blah, blah, blah. But when you do their the elf, the looking for group thing, when you do a any tr uh, if you do a dungeon, if you do a raid zone, if you do a boss fight, it pulls from all seven or eight servers on each uh, 
I think Guild Wars Two did that too, yeah. and so does Tor. Now so that I think about it, so you're not just pulling from Balmung; you're pulling from like eight other servers all on that. Does data ESO center. do that too? Well, ESO just it's just all everybody all in the one game thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. Tor does it, I think, as well for some things. Yeah, but then they only have five servers total. I know it's not so. like it's really hard because their game is about dead. But all eight yeah. people. But no, that's yeah. cool. <laughs> uh, how about you, Strafe? Did you get anything then? Since you're you're another ESO player. And WoW, apparently, Hellcat tells us WoW has that, too. So, we did, I mean, we did Poetry Hour, which was entertaining. We didn't have a huge showing, so we did poetry around the bar. So we just kept drinking and reciting poetry. It was fun. We had, a, we had our normal folks there. Nothing developmental really happened. I mean, of course, Romeo asked again, Hey, Lord Silverleaf, how's things on the family front? Trathis looked and went, We're fine here. We're all fine now. Thanks. How are you? How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, like like jazz, the week was kind of stupid. I was pretty tired most of the week. <laughs> I um, the week was kind of stupid. <laughs> I remember Guild Night, but for some reason, I'm like, you know what? It was, I was one of my 11-hour shifts. I came home, did dinner, mm. had to patch some stuff, jumped into Project 1999 for like five minutes and went, yeah, I'm going to bed and just shut everything down. <laughs> uh, you know, that's when you're rough. in that zombie mode of it's uh-huh. just yeah. up tired, that's what I was doing. You, this yeah. you have the desire to play, but the will is is lacking. It's gone. Yeah. You got your bed yeah. cast a dire charm on you, and you're like, ah, I just want to crawl in there and go to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get that. Um, I had a I had a actual event. I was since I'm the combat teacher for the Final Fantasy 14 guild I'm in, I, I figured it was probably time to hold a combat class as, might work out right work i mean out. you know i'm just logically it seems sound um <laughs> uh, it's a very small guild though uh, only two people showed up and then oh geez which is fine i i, I mean at at peak there's maybe four or five people on it's a small guild and they're 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 trying to get bigger but the reason I know they 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 actually are trying is because their guild hall is worth about seven hundred million gil. I mean, it's decorated to the, the teeth, and the fact that they even have it means they've been there forever and they're not going anywhere. It's just that is they're impressive. Just, they're just you know they're they're happy. They're they don't they're not one of those guilds. It's like we have to be the biggest and the best. They're like, is everybody happy? Yeah. Okay. Cool. You know. So and then of course two people showed up. And the second one that came in uh, lost power within five minutes. <laughs> like they they said our they're, well well yeah they came on Discord and she was like, we just lost all power to our neighborhood and I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> like well that sucks. So me and the guy that was left just duelled <laughs> because he wasn't an actual <laughs> student. So we just had an RP duel and it was fun. It, he's he's actually you know, Strafe back me up on this. Does it seem like it happens a lot when you? typically interact with other actual male players or yeah not 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 women playing men because that doesn't seem like it happens as much but yeah. just male players a lot of them just they they try to overdo everything and they make it instantly a you know like a dick measuring contest about like who's the better person automatically does that there are a lot you of dudes that yes there are a lot of one up dudes yeah that's a good and it's a good mario so way for some of reason saying they it. have to be the guy, they have to be the dude. He's like, they got something to prove. I, I mean, I saw these guys in high school. I saw them in role play. And they're, they're, they're everywhere. Yeah, but that's what I'd like this. His name's uh, Eric, A-R-I-K. He's a uh, Ura, which is the dragon people. He's like, his okay. character's like 19. He was raised on the Azim Steps, which is where the Ura like, uh, battle tribes are. And, but he's the gardener. He's like, he's, he's like the university gardener. But he knows how to fight. He just chooses not to. So... But it's never a one-up thing with with him. It's it's always been a very casual, like, yeah, you know, it's good to see. You. He's he's real supportive of all the people around him. He's he's the kind of he's a good dude. So it's I really enjoyed having a good fight with him. Of course, our first six rounds went uh, zero to zero. It was first to three hits, and we did the attack defense roll. And uh, every attack was low, every defense was high. So we went. It was a it was a very acrobatic. Uh, first thirty-five minutes of that fight before anybody landed a single Gracious. tap. Yeah, my goodness. Statistically, we won the lottery. There's, <laughs> it's just, it was just ridiculous how it kept going. But it was a lot of fun. I've, I've enjoyed it. Um, 
there are a lot of decent people. It's like I said, it's just a small guild. They're they're nice people. Everybody in there is real friendly. Um, they still have it's got the usual like somebody will come in, they'll realize it's not for them, and they'll bail out of nowhere without saying a word, and they're just like, oh well, not for them. So yeah, ah, uh, was... the good old ghost uh, yeah. guild. Yeah, they'll do like a couple things. We had, there was one she joined the guild and she was going to be security. Um, she was real standoffish and like kind of a know it all. And then, then then the next day they were gone. <laughs> well, mm. wish you the best, I guess. Hope to see you. Where? It's like they're there for the free uh, cookies. And then once the cookies dry up, they're like we're out. Yeah, I don't, I don't. And it's not like in final or not in like in ESO where you can have multiple guilds. You just have the one. So I don't. It's not really a benefit to bouncing around, but yeah, that was my my big role play. I've had a lot of little skirmishes and things like that. Mostly, I've just been just been playing the game and chilling out. Kind of looking forward to the Final Fantasy VIII remastered, or not remastered, but uh, no remastered comes out this Tuesday. I've never that, played all the way through cool. that one. Although they ruined that meme of the set where uh, what Renoa says that you're the best looking guy here, and it zooms in on his like very pixelated face. I remember that. Yeah, well, they now he's sharp enough that he actually still looks like a decent-looking guy, so they ruined that meme. Jerks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was uh, so much for that. just big block, a big chunk of hair in his face. He had, like, one, like, sloth-like f- eyeball. He had some bangs going to yeah, the side. Was, yeah. he, had the, he had, like, a long, like, he'd let, it was like Marty's hairdo that gr- let grow too long. He had Final Fantasy hair. I mean that's yeah, that they all look here. they all look like that. <laughs> they all look like Tobey Maguire in Spider Man three, but with longer hair. That's just good old Squall. Mm. I remember him well. But uh, how about hey, you? That was cutting edge. Yeah, yeah. It, it really was, and it's my favorite scene in that. Still, the dance scene, the, the very the, beginning, the graduation. That yeah. apparently they actually updated even some of the CGI scenes in it, which I'm surprised they were even able to do. Like it, they're a lot clearer than they used to be. So that doesn't typically happen when they do oh, that wow. stuff. But how about you, Yunfei? Got anything? No. <laughs> All right. Well, good talk, Sib. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, not really. I didn't really do a lot. Oh. Uh, so after no. your shoulder or your yeah. your power steering fun. Yeah, you were wiped yeah. this Body workshop courtesy yeah. of the US Postal Service. Oh. Uh, she was, was rough shape. I was livid. <laughs> Monday night, but nope, really didn't do a lot. Just I didn't actually log into anything, so I did update seventy six. Uh, I did as well. I did, play, I did play Dead by Daylight a couple of times. I thought I heard screaming. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we won both times I played. <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't keep you from going. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, I can't help it. I actually like. Oh, go ahead, babe. But no, that's about all I did. So. Yeah, apparently we saw we saw a trailer too. Apparently for that Dead by Daylight, they're bringing in uh, Stranger Things, so you can actually nice. be Steve the, the Demi- Hair oh, Harrington, no way. Oh, the Demi Gorgon, Demi Gorgon, uh, yeah, and the Demi Gorgon's the bad guy, and then Nancy is the other yeah. character. In the Nancy, you said it was Nancy. Yeah, it's Steve and Nancy is the good guys that you can play now. Nice, and then the Demi Gorgon oh, will awesome. be the, the like. <sighs> and it looked fun like fact: it was... Mama Dyer for looked like Nancy in the eighties. Oh yeah. Ooh. Oh yeah. So when I saw her hairdo, I went, I remember that when I was like six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those eighty hairstyles. They're definitely something you were they're very stylized. Very stylized. On a side note to Sib's uh deal on updating seventy six, I jumped into it earlier. Mm-hmm. Despite them fixing that bug, guess what I logged into, Sibs? Uh I- I'm, Every piece yeah. of power armor I own in my inventory and my current T sixty suit stripped down to the to the chassis. Did you okay? Did you ever log back in after that bug and get it fixed? Well, I, I, I haven't logged in back in today, but I put the T sixty well, back on my suit. At, right after that bug, yeah. uh, I when they finally got it fixed, I logged in and fixed it all, and then I've logged in a couple of times and it's been fixed. So hopefully, when you go back in, it will be correct. Cool. You know, you just have corrected to it. Fix it, but yourself. I felt your loot fatness because I had to crawl all the way to my cabin, <laughs> so <laughs> log back in was, later and sort it. I was so hostile because having to carry all that on you, it's like insane. You're like you can't do anything. You're just stuck. My weight was seven twenty-five ish over 
200 <laughs> something. Like, it was ridiculous. It, it is. And then even once you get to the bank, you have to finagle stuff because to get all the power armor pieces and the power suits to put them all back on there, it's insane. I was like, it took me forever to get that done. I didn't want to mess with it, but I did finally get it fixed. I'm not so much looking forward to that part, but yes. <laughs> Bethesda, stop. Yeah, they need to up their game for sure. <laughs> they really, they're, uh, they're, 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 their cooldown period for oh that's adorable bugs is is long gone I think they they this has been a hard year for them a really hard year I don't think if they they release Elder Scrolls Six I'm sure it'll sell great but if it's anything like they've been releasing recently it's I don't think the public is going to be nearly as forgiving as they have been in the past on that stuff I don't think so either yeah so no, that's right. Well, and last but of course not least, Mama Diafir, do you, you play or, or do do any video gaming this week? Well, I sure do. I've been playing for over 22 years. I started with the Nexus, and that's where I started doing some writing and some poetry because they had a, a poetry night on that. Oh, yeah. It was really blocky and everything, but I did a few things on that. And um, there was uh, seven years in EQ1, and there's been nearly 15 in EQ2, and I'm still around. Well, you've added yourself as an old troll, but we met recently. <laughs> She's fine. I want to hear this. Now, carry on. Sorry. <laughs> well, yeah, and uh, the Nexus was really cool because I think that was some of the things that planted the seeds for the book that I wrote, although I didn't really realize it at the time. And so that was an uh, interesting thing to go through because uh, for years I wasn't uh, doing anything artistic or I wasn't writing or doing anything. I was busy making a living. I was busy paying bills. I was trying to do all that kind of thing. So that gave me an outlet. And once the spark got to kindled, then it started working again. And, and all kinds of ideas started popping in my head. Huh. See, And see, we've had uh, a few of us here have been burnt out on a lot of that stuff. Sib, Strafe, me, uh, you and but Faye to answer, for quite some to time. answer your question, <laughs> Ashen, she's still rocking around in EQ2. I was watching her play today, and I was like, oh, Lord. Yeah, I saw when she joined that's our thing that that's where she was. So what are you doing? What are you playing in EQ2? How, how do you like the new content and stuff that they've been they've been putting The new out? content that they put in was Kale Dracal, and all they've done is they've revamped it. They did not uh, change the gear, so it's still 90 okay. drops when... We're rocking 110 stuff, so it's not really helpful. Huh. But ah! there are some new um, shiny collections, and there's uh, uh, some... In this particular X-Pack that we're in, status is at a premium, so you can get uh, some good status pieces in there, and that, that helps a little bit, because otherwise I was having to dungeon crawl in a lot of old X-Pack just to be able to get all my status back, because... Things are just exorbitantly priced. You, things that you have to have uh, for usual consuming, you know, different temp dorns and things. Yeah. Man, I really wish they would stop. I do miss shinies, though. I will say that's one of those things I I really, really miss is the shiny collection from EQ2. A couple oh, other man, games have great. it a little bit. I haven't seen it in any other games. There's they, they um like Final Fantasy fourteen, it's not quite it's not the same. They've got you know, they do things like the the lookout, they you you go around and you find special spots of, of vistas and things like that. It's just as close as they get, but there's something about that little spotting that little glowing turd on the ground and you know have no idea it's it's well, I mean it's kinda like a lottery. I don't know what it is, but yeah. I need it. But I'm gonna need it and I'm gonna sell like it. Crack. I yeah, it really <laughs> is. <laughs> It was funny because whenever me, Ashen first introduced me to uh, EQ2, I was the worst. We'd be going somewhere, and all of a sudden he'd look behind him, and he's like, where'd you go? And I was like, there was a shiny over there. I had to go get it. Then, hey, 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 don't feel too bad. I always break for shinies, too. Mm -hmm. Woohoo! Yeah. There needs to be a T-shirt. I miss shinies, That man. should be a I bumper sticker. No, it's a I break for shinies. I break for I shinies. Break for shinies. <laughs> I love that. Oh, that's good. But no, that's that's cool. Yeah, I just uh I miss EQ too. I just wish they wish the people that were doing it just were better than they are right now. But that's mostly the day my favorite games complaint since they took over. But oh, it really was such a great MMO. 
But I'm yeah, like, we're all EQ2 refugees. So it's kind of it's kind of yeah. neat to see it. Even though ESO looks better, I went, oh gosh, I remember when this was cool, but now it looks yeah. Rough. Well, yeah, and then well, and shoot, even ESO's now five years technically out of date. Oh yeah, it, it looks it's good, true. but and same thing with Final Fantasy fourteen. It looks it looks good. Their style is neat, but there are certain things. What was it? Uh, Oh, I forget his name. He was the ruler of Doma, and he had, like, the samurai kind of robe, but it was, like, off of one shoulder. And there was this big, like, elaborate detail on his left shoulder as long as you were zoomed out. But as soon as a cutscene came in, you could see, like, like even if it was just his whole body in frame, you would see the giant pixelized things on the robe itself. It was just such a... It was a blurry mess. I don't know how they could get let that through but sounds like the level of detail models snapped in at the wrong time so it was constant it, supposed it, to be far away it was always that was like that they, it's oh, like they bad. didn't even they didn't even have a, a, a more detailed version of it to snap to because it wasn't like like the you know if you've played final fantasy 14 or play you, you've played final fantasy their cutscenes aren't exactly what you would call short no, they're long and they're <laughs> most of the time they're freaking cool. Right. So when they they do these cutscenes, like they could be like ten minutes long, and and he could be sitting there talking for a full forty five seconds. It never it never got more detailed. And I got my it's I'm cranked up. I I got the computers to do that, and it there's nothing that can go any higher. And they just like, eh, I let this detail. Other details, it's like super detailed, but there was something about this one texture. They're like, eh, good enough. It's only a major character in our story that shows up for probably a total of like four hours in on screen time, but eh, why not? <laughs> so, all right, well, that's cool. Um, kind of answered some of our questions, but I did want to. Um, reason reason we did this one, Strafe was visiting his mom, and uh, two, she's a gamer, which we know because uh, I've seen some of the awesome loot that uh, she gets Strafe. For birthday and Christmas, uh, which, by the yeah. way, you've got excellent taste. Excellent mm-hmm. taste. Does. <laughs> I never failed to elicit a grin. That's right. I bet not. <laughs> I bet not. I started with Masters <laughs> Universe. It rolled on the Star Wars, and mm-hmm. that's just cooler stuff as it goes. Yeah, I don't. I have a feeling that that uh, Skeletor and Evil Inn statue set you you uh, showed me probably isn't in your future though. No, that's way too expensive. Yeah, there is. Uh, I saw one. Those, that are, those are cool, but those are way too right. Cool. There's one that they exorbitant. did recently. It was like I was like, oh, that's uh, oh, God, I can't remember what it was. It's like that looks really great. Eight hundred dollars. Okay, well, looks are <laughs> looks are all it's ever gonna be because I'm not spending that much on a statue. That's a, nope, not a plastic one, no less. No, I mean, and their their details are amazing. I will say though that they um, maybe stop. a blow up doll, hun. <laughs> they are cheap. I told you, it's Gormal's mm-hmm. mama. Hey. That's right. <laughs> but I, oh yeah, Strafe, you're gonna ha- you know the spirit stores that pop up for Halloween? Oh yes, you're gonna need to go take a look at one because one of their new items this year is a life size. Uh, oh shoot, uh, demon dog from Ghostbusters, the Hell Dogs. Oh, that's cool. It's five hundred bucks. Goodness gracious. But it's life size. So November 1st, when everything goes 50% off, I'm going to whichever spirit store has that. And if they have it, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't care. I'm buying it. If that's the only you, thing I get for Halloween next year, I'm getting it. Well, you have like the Halloween theme park at your house every year anyway. So that'd it be great true. just to hide out as the yes. dog. If you could get Sibs well, to dress up as a Ghostbuster with her daughter, and you could, she could walk up and look at little Sibs and say, that's right, my yeah. husband's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> so she's a dog but yeah i've already got there they had a slimer if you on the camera if you see him up right up there in the proton pack this last year and i got him half off and, and he's, nice there, he's actually really good quality too he's very solid he's a solid little fatty but so if they built him like that i'd definitely spend that money but yeah i i, I gotta see i gotta see it in person um but with that let's go ahead and go um the whole reason we have I mean, well, one, he was visiting her, and two, she was gracious enough to actually, you know, talk to us. But one of the things, as I said earlier, is a lot of role players, they were, I mean, we're all, in one way or another, we're writers. We're all writing. I mean, unless you're doing the voice over role play, which is, you know, 
not done very often outside of the newer generation of kids coming up, is writing. You're just basically coming up with a character and you're writing it and it's interactive interactive writing. So a lot of people that role play want to, you know, they have their own ideas. They get they they get their own dreams, their own world building exercises and this and that. So that's why since he was going to be there, we figured let's have her on one for embarrassing stories about when Strafe was a kid. Uh, but probably more importantly, but you know, I mean, I guess I mean after that, I I mean, I don't know, but it depends on the story. But uh, what it's it all takes... a troll fest. I saw Blade <laughs> Bear. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about, but uh, just what it takes to what it takes to you know what what brought you there, how how what it was like to write it, how to get it published, all all that fun stuff. So, um, we got a whole bunch of questions. By that, I mean like eight or nine. Um, but I figure we'll just talk it all over. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. It's a, uh, it was kind of a difficult deal. And I actually did um, a couple of speeches about this because this is, seems like it's a really mysterious thing. A lot of people say, how in the world do you publish something? But in actuality, it uh, is easier to do the writing and everything than it is to prep it and get it ready for publishing. The editing can be a pain. Uh, finding a publisher, you can go self-publishing, you can do something like Amazon, you can, there's uh, several other venues, however, there is the risk that you will just uh, be enveloped in anonymity because unless you have some marketing or a strategy plan that is good enough to, to get your advertising, your face out there, your book out there, your idea out there, because this book I wrote 10 years ago, or actually it was published 10 years ago. It's recently uh, being uh, revamped, and it's going to be republished oh. through Folio Avenue out of California. And nice. Yeah. Then uh, they also have the manuscript for Earthshine, which is its sequel. So oh, neat. I am um, going to be working on that. I'll, I'll work probably, oh, goodness, a good two to three weeks going through and doing the edits myself because – I paid for edits, but they were, you know, they, they didn't, they didn't have my touch to them. So this time I did it. The the poor girl that's having to plan them all in is probably having a stroke. But uh, yeah, it's all in there and ready to go. No, that's cool. Congratulations on that. Yeah, that is really. But yeah, and you, I've, I've, I've heard that um, there's a author, a author we like, uh, we read. It's called Mark Tufo from the Zombie Fallout series, and he was at, basically a lot like you. His wife kept pushing him. He's like, oh, come on, come on, you can do it. He's like, ah, 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 ah. so he, he self-published it, and now, uh, you know, he, he's got several books out and all that stuff, but they've come into a part now when he from transitioning from being, uh, well, it's been ongoing, but self-publishing in the audiobooks to having a publisher, it's kind of this, like, legal hell. Like, some of his books were pulled off audi- Audible, um, well, they revamped the contracts and this and that. So there's, there's definitely seems to be pluses and minuses to waiting if you're able to wait out and get a, a publisher or if you self publish. But that the getting getting your name out there. That's I mean, it, there's just so many books out there these days. It's it's kind of funny because for the longest time, people seem it seemed like books were kind of dying off, like nobody really cared. And then the internet came along with the self publishing on things like Amazon, and now. It's it's just a flood of them. There are a lot of them, but then it's also hard to pick and choose. And you have to decide what genre you like. For instance, um, the, I was uh, talking to one Mr. Uh, Cameron Whittingham, and he told that my book was one of 10 that was going to be featured in at a Miami book convention in, uh, I think, November 19th in Miami. Oh, and cool. uh, that came as a pleasant surprise to me because... I had thought that my my poor little book was going to languish on the internet forever right. without without me having a literary uh, agent or having anybody for marketing. You know that's that's kind of what happens to a lot of these. You know, you you're not even a fizzle. You're not even a a, a big explosion of a supernova or anything like that. It's just it's out there and then it fades into anonymity. Yeah, you just can't can't get out there. And yeah, and her for anybody interested, uh, it actually is on Amazon. It's called Surviving the Waning. If you have, I guess, it looks like Kindle Unlimited, you can get it on Kindle, and the paperback's about thirteen fifty. Uh, and it is Amazon. an incredibly really yeah well written. I really enjoyed it a great deal. Thank you. 
Yeah. You really, you are so talented and you draw your world really well with words. So what, what? Well, that's that's one of the things that I've always done. I started reading to my kids when they were little because it was important for them to be somewhat acquainted with the English language. And I always put a lot of animation into it, voice acting, if you will. Yeah. And they always learn. Whoops, we lost her. I think you oh. cut out. Oh, yeah. oh so no, sorry. You are. No, you're there right. You are. No, no, it, uh, it happens. What I was saying is, is that uh, I used to read to the kids, and I wanted them to have some sort of literate sense about themselves, and they always liked it, to hear it. And, you know, voice acting or doing impressions, it, it never hurts. It keeps kids' attention. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially ADHD boy over here. And the, uh, it's ADD, and the detail, it's ADD broski. <laughs> the, attention, the attention to detail passed on to Stray because his role play has always been incredibly detail oriented. And I have always known that it came from you just from reading your book. I was like, I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you the truth. When I was writing the book, I would write two or three chapters and I'd say, okay, let me bounce this off of you. Tell me what you think. Oh my gosh, it's good. Why did you just write that much? Get back to writing. I don't want to hear anything until you write another three chapters. Of- <laughs> I'm working in. This is like, I think towards when I was graduating undergrad. She's like, hey, I got some more. I went, wait, wait, wait. How much do you got? I got one chapter. Don't come back to you got two chapters. I don't want to be <laughs> splitting your nonsense. I don't got time for just one chapter. I make time for three. Nothing less. Yeah, I was pretty spoiled rotten, but. No. Her no. attention to detail is good. Um, you know, I also was reading other books. But uh, yeah, she's got a great story crafted, and uh, she would ask me, "Hey, can I use this name?" I'm like, "You could totally use my screen name." Yeah, totally. Just let me claim all my names everywhere first. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Um. So what? What? Uh, let's see here. What? What got you interested in? We'll we'll go kind of along the process from start to finish. But what got you interested in the idea of writing the book, and where did the I like? When did the ideas come from? You said it was from a game called Nexus, which I don't think I'm familiar with. But It's wanna... been years and years ago, and actually, uh, Strafe got me interested in that game, and then we graduated from that to EQ1, and we were sharing a computer, and <laughs> it, was, it was crazy. But uh, yeah, that was kind of the beginning of it. It was just a lot of fun, and I just realized that I, I was more of a nerd than I really <laughs> Sounds okay, like somebody so else I know. Stri- <laughs> and explain some of that that nice that nice uh, Vulcan speak she to send to basic basically Romulan. All right, essentially, mm-hmm. Nexus TK was a South Korean. It, it was a cartoony like anime looking game. Okay, G- got under that because like okay, I was like I don't have a job and I'm in junior high, and I think you have to pay to play this. So. How am I going to do this? Mom's a nerd. Hey, mom, come check this out. Isn't this fun? It's free to level 10. <laughs> so we got her into Nexus. She had a good time in that. Then my buddy Sean was like, hey, dude, there's this thing called EverQuest. It's going to freaking blow everyone's minds. And I'm like, dude, I totally want to be a Wood Elf Rogue. Got the trial at his house, played it. Again, it was like the trial was like, you get to level five and it was over. It was like the early days. And I went, huh. Okay. Hey, mom, check this game out. It's really cool. <laughs> Look, you can make a high elf, just like in Lord of the Rings. And then she started paying for it, playing it, and I thought, yes, my plan has succeeded. The problem is, it succeeded too well because she started raiding. <laughs> she started fighting me and Joel for time on the uh, on the computer because we only had one then, right? And this is true that early two thousands, right? Yeah, so I, I don't. We'd, we'd I walk home from school, say, and me and Joel were rolling dice. So who's going to play? As soon as she got in the door, it was like, go off the computer, I got a raid. Buzz off. Get out of here. I will roll you. I'll eat your face. Like, oh, Lord. Here's $10. Go see a movie. Hot. Yeah. <laughs> there was no fighting. It was mom came home. Mom took control. Mom yeah, bought the computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much so. And then she met my stepdad on it, which was cool. Oh, yeah. That he is was cool. playing a, an erudite. And uh, yeah, so it's my fault. So he's totally a man of fault. intellect. <laughs> well, he's an erudite. I mean, they got those big old heads. At least they used to. Before they went all yeah. gray skinned and like shiny. That was that was a weird. But transition. I told her when I was a lot younger, I was like, "Look, you can." Because I I would run to a lot of role players. Like, look, look, you gotta like be in your pretend to be your character, and all this kind of stuff. And mom took it and just ran with it. She'd come up and say, "How fair is thee, my lord?" And I'm like, "You sound weird, but that's cool." 
<laughs> Junior high stuff, eh? Yeah. That's really cool. Sorry, Mom. Go ahead. <laughs> all right. It's all right. No, anything else you want to tell us for her? I mean, it's just going to stop and just talk the whole I just way. Had exp- no. I'd, I'd explain I'm it teasing. because it was or some shadiness. No, this old dogger that turned out really nice. Yeah. So uh, you said you've been... So you, uh, Yeah, and I looked at that. That Yeah, that is definitely an old one. I'd never even... I've, I've heard of a lot of MMOs. That one's that definitely flew under my radar. But yeah, an old ne- Nexus TK. That looks... It looks like the, it's was, one of those sprite-based MMOs. Yeah, that was the infamous X Sephiroth X days of me. Uh, yeah. Oof. We all had those days. Mm-hmm. Gokuo, son. EverQuest 1. There you go. Yeah, that's embarrassing, but that was it. <laughs> Ooh. So um, so you got you know, realized kind of you were, no, you were nerdier than you thought. You got into enjoying, enjoying the writing. Was it? Was it something in like the especially EverQuest one? It was so good, you know, the world that they created in Norath back in the day, and the if you actually those of us that, of course, then you actually did have to read the quest dialogue because otherwise you wouldn't know how to continue the quest without typing in what needed to be said next. So was it just something in the world building that kind of sparked your imagination of from from the games that made you realize like, hey, I've got a lot of really great ideas too. And then what what made you finally decide to put you know pen to paper or fingers to keyboard or what what have you well i had been an, a lord of the rings fan for for ages but there was one thing that always irked me the one thing was okay tolkien wrote this great grand vista of books where did the elves go where did they go hmm. they got in their little boat where did they go so what i did was is i attempted to answer that without being a plagiarist or stepping on his toes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw where it said you were at, had a lot of, a uh, lot of influence and inspiration from the Tolkien, you know, his writing, writing styles and things like that. So you, I assume it's like the attention to detail and the world building bit is probably what you were meaning on that. Well, I have to tell you, this is the way that I write. It's like I see it in my head like a motion picture, and I write down what I see. <laughs> That's exactly what I do too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, that makes sense to me. That's everything in everything I imagine always plays through a scene, plays through just like it would, even down to camera shots. Which you know, my cinematographer could probably use some work in my own head, but there's not much of an editing program up there. But yeah, just you. So you just kind of see the the great you know a great crater in the. Uh, city on stilts or something like that and they just kind of go into detail from there i'm just making something up off the top of my head i don't know exactly <laughs> well there's there's not houses on stilts but in right. arbor wood there there are tr- uh tree houses which are quite a lot yeah okay so uh probably next i guess would probably probably a good question um what what is the surviving the waning about i mean without you know without giving out spoilers i suppose like i I need to tell the author i don't mind (laughs) i don't i'm teasing you author's name is janice Ayers. the characters uh had uh used of course strafe and chalice and chaladal but uh it's about this uh to start with because i have to lay out the storyline is about chala how she got to this world and what was in her destiny. So she is the product of an unfortunate occurrence between some human men and herself. And she's a, a high-born high elf. And um, she she became pregnant with uh, Chala. And she, she unfortunately passed at the time of Chala's birth. And her brother was supposed to raise her, but... He had nothing but resentment for her, especially because of what had happened to her and to his sister and what had happened to his brother. And it was a culmination of dislike for this little girl never gave her a chance. And so she was not able to really communicate with him. So she started communicating with animals. So Hmm. that right there was uh, her animal empathy was a really good thing because it helped her very much in the end of the throughout the book and into the the next books too. Um, She always wondered though, am I the only one like me? So she would scry and she found a boy 
a very cute boy, and his name was Strafe, and he was also a half elf. That's there right. Might... You heard it here. Famous half elf. <laughs> also very cute. I'm just saying. And single. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> Uh. But it shows different things that they go on. And, um, you know, I tried to make this as realistic. I've, I've read books where they had, um, they had so much description that you get lost in it. It's like, yeah, you described this 300 times. Okay, I got it. Uh, can we move on to the action? Which is why my book is kind of short. It doesn't have these. Let's do a chapter where you're bored to tears and, and it puts you to sleep and then you have to pick it up and get to the next chapter that has a little action and then you get bored to tears for another two or three chapters. And mm -hmm. I, So this is, is written like a freight train. You're going to jump on it. It's going to drag you along gasping until the end page and then you're like, where's, where, where's the next one? Yeah. It, see, and what you described too, that was my problem with uh, uh, Tom Clancy was he would go down – you know, like I don't, I don't need to know what size the lug nut is on an aircraft carrier. Every fourteen <laughs> panels and all this and that. It's like I don't, I don't need that level of de detail for a Harrier jet to know what kind of fuel it burns and how long and how much. You know, the fuel to fuel to weight ratio and the thrust and this and that. I don't, I don't, I know what a Harrier is. It's the one that goes up and then flies straight and it shoots things and makes them go boom. Let's get to the boom. You know, I. There, there's a certain level of detail that is good, but there are, I, I completely understand what you're saying with the, I don't need 20 chapters to explain what a field looks like. I've seen one. It's okay. It's the, the, if you, if your writing style gets to the level of dragon, the next time on dragon ball Z, oh uh, man, you know, since on dragging, <laughs> right. <laughs> Things that dra speaking of things that drag on, five minutes for an episode is apparently ten episodes. Yeah, yeah, that thinks a lot. Well, I took that. some college classes, and I was pleasantly surprised right after we had uh, gone through my English class introduction to uh, literature, and we had read and studied uh, Bartleby, which was by Herman Melville, and it was his short story in an attempt to decry the fact that he had five books. Uh, that he had written and he couldn't find readership. And as I was leaving, I said, yeah, I know how he feels. So of course, you know, his ears <laughs> pricks up and he says, what have you got? <laughs> Bring it. Let me read. So he read it and he, his eyes were somewhat rounder and he's like, you know, it's always the quiet ones. You just never, you just still waters run deep. And he kept going on. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, maybe you can help me with a second book. Maybe there's something you can help me shine it up. He read it. He said, I do not know why you are not famous and that's oh. what he said and i just looked at him shook my head and walked away <laughs> and remember it, she was also the quiet and nice one quote unquote uh, but they didn't have to grow up with her i'm just saying hey now you're <laughs> a good kid because i was a troll yes yes that, that's my philosophy True. beat them until they're good I am within striking distance. <laughs> you somewhere. are. You better be nice. Just not, you don't got the, the benefit of Texas being 5,000 miles long. You're so there. She, so you, he got to read the second one. I, I've, I've been read the second part. And uh, all I can say is it's, it's, it's outstanding. And I'm yeah. not allowed to talk about it. I think I told no. Jazz one Easter egg. And it was like a, a part of an Easter egg. And she's like, what? I'm like, I can't say no more. She's like, you're dirty. I'm like, I know. <laughs> Yeah, I thought there the, may I thought there the may or may not be weird. dark elves in the second uh, book. There may or may not be a character by the name of Rengotz. <laughs> that I, I that sound that character sounds awful, just terrible. Probably He's based terrible on dude. something what horrible, you horrible. Oh, <laughs> yeah. uh, the stuff you I character in Rengotz got into. Uh, it was a glorious hate fest. <laughs> But no, that's cool. I'm really, I'm really glad because I, I did see that it was in 2009. I was like, oh, there's no more. But it, the in these days too, I, with the publisher, I am. Um, <coughs> have you? Uh, I because we're big. My my wife Sib and I we're we're big fans of Audible. Uh, Yun Fei recently she's been listening to a lot of audiobooks too, and they're not like they used to be. Obviously, they used to be. It seemed like back in the 80s and 90s, every audiobook was read by uh, Ben Stein. Ben Stein. You know, it was just like... Bueller. <laughs> and the rolling vista went on and on as far as the eye could see. 
We're being paid to read this Ren, book. But we get, Ren, we get got, crabs. Ren got said with great enthusiasm with this. And he did. You know, it's just like, well, why are you? And nowadays, they really, is really, really, I mean, they get good at, get good voice actors almost to the point of, like, the guy that did the Harry Potter series, 200 and something characters, every single one of them sounded different. Sean Rene that does the uh, zombie Fallout zombie stuff. Book. Um, he's just, he's just fantastic. Uh, even, uh, uh, James Marsters, Spike from Buffy the Vampire Slayer reads the Dresden, uh, uh, files novels. So have you, you have ever thought of like getting, having it done into an audio form? Cause there, that's really where a lot of this stuff seems to take off these days too. Well, you know, that there's nothing that would stop me from doing that. I can tell you, I did several book readings at the time that it was published trying to promoted on my own, mm -hmm. of which one uh, Strafe attended, and so I was in full uh, regalia from the fanfare, oh, yeah. the Renfair type of, of gear, and and I did several voices and everything, and I also did a reading up at the uh, university, and, and it was funny because when I was at the university, there was like uh, probably a dozen people there, there was a couple that had more degrees than you could shake a stick at, and they were <laughs> totally boring. Nobody was really listening to them. They they were, you know, grandiose up into themselves, but uh, hardly anybody was paying any attention to them. Then there was a few other people who spoke. I was next to the last. Everybody was talking over the other ones, and they were kind of yawning and looking around and looking at right. their watches and things until I started talking. Yeah, everybody was on the edge of their seats. And they were asking me questions after I read my sample chapter, and they wanted to know all about it. It was really, it's always gratifying to hear, have somebody really listen to you when you're talking. I got to say, from, from being from little kid mode strafe to older brat strafe mode, uh, when you would read, when, when she reads stories, like she's her own voice actor and she'd switch it around on mm -hmm. you and you, you were in rap, you were like, dude, what's going to happen next? You're like enraptured and she'd stop, and that's it for the night. Like, you can't just, no, no. <laughs> we at least have. Half a paragraph. Next bumping. time on Dragon Ball Z, and Strafe's yeah. just in there like, oh, what? No. <laughs> she Dragon Ball Z'd me early. L yeah. See, and there's, and that's the thing. You can be, I, like, there. I've we've all met some amazing people, and um, clearly, just you, you coming on here, we've, you know, this is just a silly little podcast, some on the internet, one of of hundreds of thousands, and. We've had people call in and they get so, you know, just because they they could be the most amazing writer in their role play that they get in. But they come they come on the show and they either they get nervous or some people just they you know, the it's there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that they're not great or they they get so nervous they can't speak properly like I just did, apparently. <laughs> but you know there's there's a such a difference between being intelligent and having more degrees than you could shake a stick at and like you said and being somebody that is worth listening to and it sounds like when you are you know when you're reading your stories that makes the huge difference i actually went to uh see jim butcher the dresden files author when he came here to tulsa and he was supposed to read <laughs> he was supposed to read a a chapter of the book just like you did and then answer questions and he got on stage and he's he was a great speaker and he's just like you guys have all read my books right and they're like yeah we love him and he's like so how about i just stand up here and just talk answer questions for the next two hours that sound good and it, it was like yeah that's good and he gave us a little preview of the next upcoming book and just he was a person Instead of like a, a pile of degrees, which that sounds exactly like yeah. what, you, what you did. You're just, yeah, I mean, you come on here and it's just like you've been here the whole time. It's, that it, it makes such a big difference in getting stuff out there. You're natural at Very natural. To people. Thank you. That's a good word for it. <laughs> well, I didn't think that. There's been a few times, and I will tell you when I was in the school, I would pay people to do my book reports, my verbal book reports, because I didn't want to get up and stand in front of anybody. <laughs> She got stage it was right. very painful. Yes, it was very bad. And right. even later on with some other speaking engagements, I would pretend to be cool while my knees were knocking a staccato. <laughs> but, um, you know, you get through it and then you go on. Yeah, and, it, and I understand. I, I always hated talking to people. And I've as I've gotten older, I think the I give a crap. Uh, I don't give a crap has kicked in. And I'm just like, <laughs> eh, eh, you'll either listen to me or you won't. 
Which, you know, that's kind of where you have to get. But the only way you get get better at that is by doing it. And it sounds like just practicing at the bedside of Baby Strafay, you know, doing reading your books and things like that. You you already had reading out loud to an audience, even if it was an audience of one, already under your belt. Where it sounds well, like there, maybe the other guys, not so much. There was a little bit of that early on. Um, when the... The younger troll, his his henchman, wanted me to <laughs> read at his his school, and the uh, job wouldn't let me go. I recorded it on a on a cassette recorder and sent it up there, and they loved it so much they were running around to all the rooms and wanted me to read more. But oh, wow. you know, I'm thinking, you know, this is this is not my job to, <laughs> to, <laughs> to be read to I was just a guest reader. <laughs> oh, how funny! That is really cool, though. Yeah. Yeah, it really yeah. is. Yeah, the brother was, he was, uh, he had it miffed because Panasonic wouldn't, let, yes, we can say it because they laid her off and they were dirt bags in 2008. They didn't let her go, so mom recorded it, and uh, he was all upset, and of course, once they read it, then everybody wanted more, and then I guess, you know, my brother was like the big man on in second grade, or whatever it was. <laughs> <laughs> big man in second grade. <laughs> all of three and a half feet tall. Pretty so, much. So, uh, so moving on to that, so what you you, know, you got the idea, you started writing. How long, um, how long from that spark of of a uh, hey, I got an idea for something? Um, how long did that take, and what kept you going? Because for the writing, because it seems to me like a lot of people, the ideas come easily, but actually sitting down and taking the time to pound it out is the the longer and the one of the longer harder processes for some people. All right. I can tell you when this book started pinging, it was like a ping pong ball in my head. It would not let me sleep. It would not let me do anything. I had to write it down. I had to get it out. If it didn't, it was like it was going to explode in my head. So I wrote down everything. It wasn't like a dream that you forget about after you get up and walk around for four or five minutes. It was constantly there demanding with a ball peen hammer to get out of my head. <laughs> so it, so how long did it take you to, from, to, to write it all out then? Probably about three and a half months. Wow. But getting it published took about who another year and a half. And and did you did you go through a publisher? Did you self publish? I self published because I went to all kinds of publishers. I after I got the about the fortieth uh um decline on them and same with trying to get some kind of uh literary critic i said well it looks like if i'm going to do this i'm gonna have to do it on my own because the literary critics wanted somebody who's always already established already had a couple of books and wasn't going to be a one book wonder mm -hmm. that they didn't want to waste their time on so what i did was is I, I asked around to my friends that i had where i was living there in south florida at the time and everybody always knew somebody so they suggested this guy and i was a little dubious but i thought well i'm not getting anywhere i'm doing anything else and i want to try this of course their angle was is that they were going to publish it. I was going to do all the promotions. I was going to do all the marketing. They were going to rake in the money. Didn't basically, work very well. So basically, my crap co advertisement at the beginning was an actual thing. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, I, that's why I kind of, that's kind of where I've, I've heard heard stories of stuff like that where the publishers they just and that it doesn't make sense because it seems like. If they if they're there to support you, I mean, yeah, obviously you doing you doing self promotion and getting your name out there and this that and the other thing, of course that helps. But if they aren't willing to you know throw a little bit your way and, and spend some time on advertising on local radio station, like hey, you know, come on down to Barnes and Noble at from blah 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 to blah blah blah, and you know, meet the author kind of stuff. If they can't do that, I mean, it seems like they're almost shooting themselves in the foot because then how does anybody hear about it? especially these days. The only thing that they did is that they put it on uh, for sale at barnesandnoble.com and on amazon.com. The e-version that you see that's available on Amazon myself. Mm. Yeah, on the uh, okay, on the Kindle, yeah. Yeah, and that's just so but now you've got a new publisher. A new publisher and then there's this uh, gentleman that I mentioned before that said something about the uh, Miami Book Convention, and he is apparently a marketer, a book marketer, and 
So I'm going to explore that tentatively and see how that's going to work out. And perhaps it'll be able to get the word out a little bit more. But here's the thing. And this um, one of the guys at Folio Avenue told me, he said, what are the movies that you see these days? And I said, well, you know, you have your shoot 'em ups and uh, chases and you have your ninja movies. Superheroes, and the, yeah. Yeah, and then you have the fantasy books. And he says, exactly. And they're running dry on ideas. And you have, a, you have a good idea. And I'm like, yeah, that's nice to hear. But, you know, if it happens, it happens. But, you know, <laughs> after 10 years and it being a sleeper, I don't know. Yeah, but you know that that that's how that stuff. A lot of that can happen. It just it's it's been out there for a while, and then you never know. I mean, just just this weekend, um, uh, you know, you're saying about t- fantasy stuff. The the new Netflix Dark Crystal came out this weekend series, and we watched an episode of that. Fantastic, and then which is obviously very fantasy mm-hmm. based, and then uh, what was it? Carnival Row, which is like a steampunk uh, man invaded the land of you know Tirnanog and. Now the the fairies and the pucks and all that are are kind of in this industrial age, and that was also very good. But it you know it's a it's a take on that fantasy, but in a completely new and it, well, except for Dark Crystal, which is you know f- f- thirty years old, but it's a new take on fantasy, which is, is exactly what it sounds like you did. You're the with the where your idea of like well, where did the the elves just like floated off into nowhere? They had to go somewhere. And, and that was more pers- to it. that was my premise exactly, but I did not write specifically where they went because I wanted people to believe anyone that has uh, a semi forested area near them it could have been there to give it a more personal yeah they cut out that it could be anywhere any forest anywhere instead of just you like draw the reader in yeah, which yeah. Is, is a good writer does. Yeah, so long as it's not the suicide forest of Japan, probably st- I would probably, probably Ooh, I would avoid that, that forest. <laughs> I would not go there. That way lies madness and probably demons, but most likely, yeah. So okay, so well, uh, I mean, you 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 cracked yours out. You really, like you said, it was a ping pong in your head. It just had to come out. So three months. I know that's that's a pretty quick process, especially for like a first time book. But how long? Um, you said you had a lot of trouble with. And this one seems to be uh, something a lot of people struggle with is the editorial process, getting it so that, you know, all the grammar is correct and spelling mistakes and make sure everything is a a coherent well, kind of Raise thing. your hand if that was your uh, best subject in school. <laughs> <laughs> yes. funny. Exactly. So this is what happens is you write it in the – in a rush, and mm-hmm. then you have to go back and say, let me reconstruct this idea. Let me make it more coherent. Oh, dear. There is no punctuation here that is correct. <laughs> let me go back through. How many commas in a row can one person use? You know? <laughs> so how long does in how long does that take? And or what, what's that like? I mean, you, did you, you said you the first time that you hired some people, and it sounded like that was somewhat dubious. It was because they, first thing they said was, you know, I really don't want to take your money. You're a first time author and this is probably not even going to be worthwhile and you don't have much of a story. And I said, how much have you read? Well, you know, the first chapter, I said, keep reading. And so he said, well, you know, you don't have, you don't have any romance. You don't have any intrigue. You don't have anything but these two characters. I said, keep reading. And so by the end of the book, he said, oh my God. Gosh, I can't wait to see what happens next. So they were being basically, if you hadn't kept saying that, they'd have been like, oh, you don't have anything because we're impatient. We only read two chapters. Pretty much. Exactly. But the, the the other problem was is that they wanted to make a lot of money off of it because this is a money-making business. If you are right. an author, people want to make money on you every which way. So one of them is through the editing now, I hadn't been in school. Now, I, I did graduate and, and nas- as a National Honor Society member when I graduated from high school, but it had been so many years that it, and I had been working in a technical aspect that I really hadn't done a lot of writing. So that's why all of my grammar, punctuation, verb tenses, everything was a little off because I was slapping it down as fast as I could go, like I told you. <laughs> right. 
So then this guy was just complaining, oh, you do this and you do that and then blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, just that's what you're supposed to do is fix it. Smooth it out for me. But when he did it, it was like, it's like the difference between, oh, yeah, that's great for, oh, I guess that'll do. Mm. So the, like they were basically rewriting it instead of just correcting punctuation? No, they, they or... weren't. No, they they didn't even rewrite it. It was like a couple of words. They says, oh, well, maybe this was the one because I was doing a lot of this through email. Okay. And they really wanted those. They really wanted these big payments for doing this stuff. And I'm telling you, after I took another couple of classes in English, it reminded me of everything and resharpened me up. So I did all mine my own and it'll be a lot better. I promise. <laughs> well, yeah, and. Because I know that well, and it's with a written word. A lot of times, when it comes to people's writing style, they they use certain things. Um, the, the guy I keep referencing, Mark Tufo, in on the audiobooks, he has a lot of asides. But when he's they're written out, the guy, the the character is writing it in the form of a journal. So he'll be telling the story of you know, and I, I shot the zombie in the head, and then he'll put in parentheses this side story about about something else, which is. This still the the character telling the story, but it's like it's his way of showing that the character has gone off the reservation and it, like his ADAD or ADHD kicked in and he's telling something different. Not typically what you would do in a writing style, but that's what his his way of showing that for that character does that. And if you don't get somebody that understands, like this is just what the character does. It doesn't have to make you know gram- grammatic sense then you end up, I guess it sounds like kind of like what you got with where you were just willing to, eh, I think I'll just go back to school real quick and learn this on my own. It'll be cheaper. Actually, I was going back to school to become a nurse and oh. uh, missed getting into the nursing program by three hundredths of a point. Ooh. And I thought there's got to be a reason why I missed them that much. And, and I kind of weighed my age with uh, the relative time it would take to wait and go back again and and seriously, after six years of going to college and taking all these courses, I'm a well-educated lady, but I have no degree. Ugh. That sucks. <laughs> so, Jez, you have anything to say on colleges? <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's awful. But so, yeah, and that's our, our daughter. She's she wrote a book and, and she's trying to get stuff like that done, too. And she's looked up that stuff. That's why I was curious as well. And she, it's the, the amount of money a lot of these edit editors want. It's ridiculous. And a lot of, a lot of them, hundred dollars an hour and up. Yeah. 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 My husband does that actually on the side of one of his other jobs. He works for a company that they pay you to proofread and Mm -hmm. edit things. So if, and when I ever decide to finish mine, I'm just going to make him do it because I'm not going to pay anybody. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, he, he can't me. he can't waive that fee. So you're just going to transfer it from one account to the other, right? You're still going to have to pay him. No, I mean, he no, can no, do he, it for me privately. No, no, you're going to have to pay him. No, he's going to need to be paid. <laughs> oh, I'll pay him all right, but it ain't going to be that. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I think that's a very different oh, transaction. My. Well, well. <laughs> But yeah, it's it's ridiculous the amount. And I, I mean, I get it. You're 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 using someone's using their degree and their their knowledge of the English language. But at the same time, good lord, mm-hmm. uh, starting at a hundred dollars an hour. I mean, there's lawyers that don't get that much an hour. <laughs> Jeez. So, so once you've got now that you've you know you've got it all edited, um, what what do you think is kind of the when it comes to the publishing, obviously you got it, you know, you, you did it. Sounds like you've done it about all the ways you can self publishing, going through a publisher now having hopefully a better publisher. What, what's, what do you think is the preferred method for somebody that's just starting out? What, what should they maybe try to do? I think that even as, as terrible as it sounds, you should probably take a couple of courses in the college and go through a really good English teacher. Write some papers. You'll have to rewrite them six times. It makes you better. Then go through and do your own stuff and do it the same way. Rewrite it until it suits you. You walk yeah. in the background. Yeah, that's Jess. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of her kids, I think. Probably no, one. it wasn't me. 
That was, was actually that was oh, actually my Yorkie dog. Oh, it's a Yorkie. <laughs> <laughs> no, my nice little Chihuahua is, is laying there. He heard the dog, by the way. <laughs> Even through my headset, he heard it because he's sitting right here looking at me with great big eyes. I'm just filming the door. Where's the Yorkie? Where's the Yorkie? <laughs> but no, okay. So, yeah, that's that's definitely so what but in when it came to the publishing itself, was it was is is it going through a publisher that will treat you right and you know like well you know you i have a that? contract with them i'm not sure how i will be treated so far everybody has been very courteous very kind and always emphatically saying i'm part of their family now um the guy that contacted me initially and it came kind of came out of the blue said that uh he was looking for new publishers to pick up for his his uh publisher company and, and i was like well why did you call me and how did you get the number well he said i talked to amazon and you know they gave me the information and he said well you know you have some really good reviews and you of course you have one or two that's bad and i said yeah you you can't please everyone right and so he went on to say well you know uh i think we could do better for you than what these other people have if you just want to give us a try and i thought Hmm. All, All right, right, let's give it a go. This is, I mean, this is like my first baby. Right. But I lo- that I'll, I've had to love longer than the rest of my kids. So let's, uh, let's give it a go. I'm so glad my the other two brothers don't listen to the show. <laughs> <laughs> what? I mean, oh, just... yeah, that book. Totally. Yeah, your book. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah, well, I mean, just, <laughs> I'm just saying, I mean, one of them is something to be proud of. And then there's you three. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh but you know that is that is accurate really because well, yeah. like my first book that i still am working on now i have been writing this book since i was 15 so i am 52 <laughs> so this is my first baby at least there's still in a five way. in it jazz what at least there's still a five in that number there you go yes yes but i i would treat this yeah it's my first baby and my kids are like, what? And I'm like, you just don't understand. <laughs> so she nailed it. That's that's kind of how I feel, too. And I've tried to have it published, and they told me to rewrite it. So I've been rewriting it and rewriting it and rewriting it. Sometimes <sighs> when that happens, you need to have somebody else read it and make suggestions and see if you want to tweak things in a different way. And that's basically what I did is I gave it to a couple of people that are literary kind of people who don't even like sci-fi so that they could, so I could get an honest feel and they all liked it. So I started, I'm, I'm in the process of putting a new world into it, which is complicated and I have no time, but it is slowly happening. So. Well, keep your vision and, and keep your dreams alive. And yes. you get there. Yeah. Yes, thank you. And you're my inspiration. So whenever somebody says, have you ever? No, no. I know somebody that did this. I'm going to do this too. <laughs> yeah. Well, Sometimes you just cut through the, the noise and the crap. And there you go. Just haven't had time between working and everything. It's just been really hard to find the time. But I've gotten a little bit done lately. So I think you I'm going to get it. You have to schedule time to do yeah. this. You and really I, you do. do. You really do. And I finally went and got Scrivener. And I've been using that instead of Word. And I got the entire world and all the different books that are part of this world all in the same file. And it's really helped. I've come a long way since I since I switched to Scrivener. So I have a good feeling it'll eventually work. Yeah. Okay, I got a got a question for you from uh, the Great Whoop Dini in our chat. It says, Mama Dire Fear, uh, what's your favorite literary trope? Could be a... Character archetype, literary convention, uh, stock setting, or plot element. Something. So, which they want to know what your favorite literary trope kind of is. Well, that's kind of hard to say. I mean, I've gone through so many things. I was a voracious reader, and there was a lot of things I did like. I think I did stop on. Probably the Tolkien-based things, the Dark Elf trilogies, the things like that. I, I can remember putting the, the uh, Lord of the Rings trilogy in Strafe's hands and begging him to read it. And it, it <laughs> took him two years. And once he finally did, he was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, it was same, good stuff. Same Dark Elf stuff. I stuck that in his hand. And he's like, yeah, 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 I'll read it later. 
started reading all these like, oh my gosh! I thought, yeah, <laughs> She's got but... that down. She has got that down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Laugh it it's up. It's almost y'all. like she <laughs> raised you. Yeah. Almost like she is, man. Almost. Hey, but yeah. Do? Now that's, that's, that's it. Thank you for the question, Great Whoop Dini. Which is still a great name. It's got great mm-hmm. in it. But yeah, and, and knowing there's just. It is a tough question just because there's such a wide variety. It's tar- you you almost having a favorite one over the other because they so intermingle. You know, you can't always have one without another. It is kind of hard to have a favorite on that. But I think for me, I know at least for gaming, for me it's always plot. Oh, even over graphics. Yeah. Uh, and gameplay is a close second because if, you know, if it plays like a brick, it doesn't matter how you could have the best thing ever written, but it, yeah, it's not it's enjoyable. Not you're fun. not gonna stick around, right? Yeah, but um, so so moving on to here, um, I have a quick oh, go ahead comment question. I know you mentioned earlier about having a second book that a lot of mm-hmm. publishers don't want you to have or just be a one book wonder. Do you? recommend maybe writing out a second one or having an outline for a second one ready to go if you are getting into this yeah uh, that would be very helpful because a lot of people think that they're going to divest a lot of time and energy and marketing or whatever and if they think that you're only going to write one book they'll Mm -hmm. recommend you just self-publish and go from there because they don't want to be bothered with you now Mm -hmm. these people seem to think because my book is good that there's going to be a lot more interest in the times coming up I mean, that would be nice, but I take everything with a grain of salt. You need to, too. You need to be a little thick-skinned. You might have the greatest book in the world, but, you know, unless you can get readership, unless you can get yourself out there, and I'm not talking, you know, the flying plane with a little flapping banner behind it, because that's not very Mm -hmm. readable. Um, (laughs) You you have to put a lot of time into it. I mean, it's it's like another job. I tried uh, online websites that didn't garner any attention and while the the book readings were really good they were very transient and that uh, I think as, as soon as they walked out the door they forgot you right okay yeah no that that makes sense but I was yeah. just curious about that she's got yeah. a third book in her head I think I, I just, <laughs> yes <laughs> yes I, I I have to bring it to fruition from what it said that uh, the half elves are going to try to save everyone so that I've got to try to figure out exactly how I want this. I have a few ideas. I have a skeletal outline in my mind. I haven't written it down, but yeah, so there's going to be enough. Gormal contacted me, you know, mm-hmm. you know, that guy. I think you partially raised him as well. Anyway, uh, before Crapco beat him out in the commercial slot, he had, he had some idea about, he was going to review your book in a quick way. But his biggest complaint was there was no trolls. His words, not mine. <laughs> but, uh, you know, hey, it is what it is. Crapco got the bid. It does happen. And it's not to say there's not trolls in her, her book. I think she hints around a lot of stuff. Especially in the second book that I can't discuss. But she hints around at stuff. While you're reading it, you're like, you wonder, like, dude, is she talking about this or that? And it drives you nuts. You're like, oh, dude, it's got to be something. Like, what's she doing to me? Just sort of a hint at things that might be. Oh, yeah. There. It's like yeah. It's like when you're eating pie and you're like, is that a hint of cinnamon? Like, that's, that's the kind of deal it is. <laughs> yeah. And what, that's awesome. And, and what you had said, too, about having a thick skin. And it doesn't matter who who you are. No, Nobody is all things to all people. It's just not. You know, there's people that that hate Stephen King's. There's people that hate, you know, George R. R. Martin. There's people like me that aren't f- huge fans of Tolkien's writing style. That's just me. Cause he goes on to a lot of details for me. And also I hate halflings. Uh, so that's kind of a problem. <laughs> since They're the main characters. Uh, they're disgusting and their feet are gross, but <laughs> that's also from, he's got Edward. a halfling phobia. Just saying. Yeah. Which is, she'll understand it though. Cause my phobia for halflings came from EverQuest one. Uh, when anyone would cast Spirit of the Wolf and you would see those disgusting little sausage feet running around at 5,000 miles an hour. <laughs> it's gross. Put some shoes on. You're, 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 yeah. And you're, you're short. The only thing you're good for is falling off Kalethan when you're drinking. That's it. That's all you're good for. Hey, there is one funny thing that I saw. 
is is that uh, one of those af- little halfling guys was jumping, had a kilt on, and he was trying to vault over a certain area, and all I could see was a little feet pendling back and forth, and about fell out like. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Disgusting. Ugh. I mean, yeah. they are they are suspicious little characters. I mean, I remember meeting this halfling rogue in EQ2. And, it, and, and as soon as combat started, he'd say, he'd jump behind the guy, backstab, and say, here comes the hobbit sausage. Like, this guy is gross. <laughs> what, what is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's funny. Okay, so I got I got another question for you uh, from again from Great Group Dean. He says, uh, "My Mama Dire Fear, do you RP in video? I uh, video games or tabletop games?" I have done some in tabletop games. Uh, we had have had a couple of D and D. It turned out that people liked my food, and they were had brought a game <laughs> over here. So I would feed them, and I would listen to what they said, and they kept trying to get me on there. When I finally got on, I found out how much I liked it, and I just laughed, and it was hilarious. And Strafe DM'd a few games for us, and that was wonderful, except that he did the Fallout one so well that we're all gasping for more. And he's like, no, 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 I don't have time for that anymore. It wasn't that. It was grad school that kind of monkey-wrenched everything. Oh, blame it on grad school. It was. We didn't have Discord then either. What's your excuse now? Yeah. I mean, you got Discord. I mean, there's programs Ed's, that you could do Ed's that. Oh. By the bay. What's going on? Oh, listen, he started another Fallout group in Houston. And no, I didn't. Out. This yes. is this, see. This is rank hypocrisy and rank. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Betrayal. Like, slander. Slander. <laughs> Betrayal. <good too. laughs> no, what I did was I was trying to get my buddy Nathan and his brother invested in the Fallout area in, in Boston before their characters get to Boston so then I could get everybody to meet on Discord and then they'd have two more players to roll with. That that was the goal, but it didn't pan out for them, so it was like one game and that was it. So this whole I, I left them to jump start a new game, that's that's this rank falsehood. <laughs> <laughs> you hear this you hear this it's what I deal with on a daily my goodness. Mm. No, I don't hear anything. What are you talking about? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah no. Just like the rest. <laughs> You're the best, bro. <laughs> Uh, but okay, so here's here's a here's a uh, probably a question. I think one that everyone's actually kind of curious are, um, what are some of the most embarrassing stories you have of Strafe as a kid? Oh, uh, that's just a little <laughs> one. On one now. of my favorite ones. We used to no consideration, his, his no thought. and I. Strafe. Hey, hey, your mom's <laughs> talking. Don't make his, me mute you. His 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 dad and I took him out to eat. He was a wee one still in the high chair and his dad says hey see that lady slap her on the backside and he did <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome she turned around and she said if you weren't so little and cute i'd take offense but since you're so cute i'm gonna just i'm just gonna give you a little <laughs> tweak on the cheek and go on your way and he was just blissfully unaware and i was beat red <laughs> I got no memory of that. That's fake news. That's fake news. <laughs> That's fake news. news. Uh huh. No. Yeah, no. Ask, ask your old man the next time you talk to him. <laughs> it was. It happened at the Duck End, which no longer exists. So it's fake news. It's all fake news. <laughs> <laughs> it's an imaginary place. It never happened. Everybody says so. <laughs> now it says it's made up. One of the more recent ones, and it's it's been probably about six or seven years now, but uh, they we went to a birthday party, and I was helping the lady with her little girl who was turning three, and we baked a cake, and it was beautiful and everything, and there was this huge place, and I was just a little uneasy there, apart from the fact that I knew the family. Well, hang hang and on, hang on. Before she goes any further in the story, mm-hmm. the people there all played D&D with us when we were, we were playing Forgotten Realms. Uh, it was a 3.5. So we all were pretty much gaming nerds. With that in mind, car- carried away. So we were talking, and I was kind of looking around and a little nervous. And they had many balloon displays around. You know, some of them were like in little from the ceiling. Some of them were in bouquets that, that were on the counters and things. Yeah. And one of them popped. And I clicked into D&D mode. I jumped behind the tank, who was Josh. And I pushed Strafe ahead of me, 
And he says, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to sacrifice the ranger. Doesn't, doesn't matter. It happens to be your kid, right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> she straight did that. It was. I just looked at her and went, really? You throw me under the bus just because I'm a ranger? I see how it is. Well, She goes, hey, she was laughing. I'll jump behind the tank. And Josh just nodded and kind of smirked like, yeah, she did it right, bro. I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, thanks. Well, I mean... <laughs> I mean, everyone. He, most most of us here have played EverQuest one. We all know that the hey pulling tank up, rangers down, or pulling yep. mob, yeah, ranger down. Story. Yeah, mm-hmm. I played a ranger. Caster always elf. gets behind the tank. Always. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is mm-hmm. so funny. And rangers, I mean, so moving on. <laughs> no, that's that's those are good stories. So I, the, moving on a little bit from that. So you said you you've been playing for since. Was Nexus the first time you played video games, or have you been playing games or like just like yeah, even single games? That was the very games? first one. I mean, I had a CRT co- computer monitor when we were working on Nexus. It was a long time ago. Yeah, when she was... said she's playing Asteroids on Atari with her. I was gonna co- say with it, it, like even arcade back in, back in the arcade game days. It's even. not really an RP thing though. That's just yeah. you know, like you said, an arcade. game. But it got you, got you kind of got your feet wet. Like okay, I can do this. Like my parents. I'm going to be honest. I could put a remote control of any kind. It could be the Nintendo one with all of five buttons on it. And I may as well have handed them uh, the <laughs> the secret to life or the the Rosetta Stone and said, okay, now translate this. Because they had no idea. They, they could, it, was just, it was too many buttons. They had no idea what was going on. My dad was halfway decent with Frogger, but that was the Atari. It was a joystick, and there was one button on the top. He understood that. He started acting all that stuff. My poor parents, bless them. It just it just wasn't going to happen ever. So it's always kind of you know it's always cool and, and especially back you know in the early two thousands and stuff that parents really weren't like it is today. Like all our my generation of of instrafes and all that, we've grown up with video games. It's you know all yeah. our kids play them. It's no big deal. You know most of the ones that that are playing them now, their parents play it alongside them. You know, and if they don't, then they at least have a base understanding of what everything is. With so, that in mind, uh, the youngest uh, henchman that uh, Strafe has, when he was still living here, one of his buddies came in and I was reading and the dude came in and looked and he says, dude, dude, your mom's playing. How cool is that? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, oh, let's yeah. go to a room. Yes. And back then, that's totally how it was. Like uh, my, my, my best friend, my, excuse me, my best friend Jared, even though his mom, the only game she would play on the Super Nintendo was uh, Dr. Mario. She loved that game, but she was super cool because she was playing. And that's all it yeah. took. It was a very low bar back then, as well, I guess. Though, <laughs> looking back on it, it's like, huh. So, so do you play a lot of, uh, I mean, we know you play EverQuest 2 and you've played a lot of MMOs. Do you play a lot of the single player story driven games or anything like that? No, I haven't in a long time now. When I worked for Panasonic, there was some games that they they had a 3DO um, wow. tabletop, and it console. was supposed to yeah. have been, yeah, console, and it was supposed to have been cutting edge at the time. I think they were a little ahead of their time, and it was pretty good. They had some things that were, it was a single thing that I liked. was called Monster Manor. The kids deplored it. They thought it was horrible. Right. It also had uh, a couple of... Uh, racing car games that they liked pretty well and they played that it had one or two others and i I tried to keep them in that because i knew that that was something of interest to them and they did have a lot of good times with it this is a pre-playstation era so panasonic got to market first didn't market with the crap and sony's like we got you son and they beat him yeah yeah she she played this game called what was it monster manor it was pretty much a haunted house dungeon crawl and you had this little electric taser gun and uh it, it was. It wasn't Doom. You know how Doom. You had the weapons. Right. It was hot pace. This thing was puzzle solving, and you just lost patience with. It. She loved it. But there were other racing games that the early cutscene video that was really digitized. And right. It looked cool then, but now it's like hot garbage. Yeah, it's like it was a racing game where you blew. It was like before uh, Twisted Metal, where you raced around. You had you could equip guns and stuff, and you could blow up the other race car. It was always entertaining to like blow my brothers off the road. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, poor 3DO. That, uh, oof. It didn't. I've, yeah, they, 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 they were ahead of their time, but man, they, they just didn't have, they didn't have the, the. They didn't market it well. And here's an inside scoop on that. Now, 
Good. Sony and, and Panasonic had an ongoing thing. Uh, Sony came out with beta, and Panasonic came out with VHF. Mm-hmm. Now, the beta did look better, but it was only for two hours. How VHS nailed the coffin was is that they had the three modes. They had the, the two, four, and six hours. They had the extra long play. They had the regular play. And then they had the, the medium one. And the way that they did this is they sacrificed picture quality. The two hour was the best. You had fewer pixels and it was a little grainy on the four hour mode. And it was extremely grainy on the six hour mode, but you could record six hours of your stuff. Right. Yeah. And that wasn't the only thing that they did. They had an ongoing thing. So when Sony went through and did the gaming console that you're talking about, that was the nail in the coffin for them to get out of the gaming business because that's what they were trying to do. They thought yeah. they'd get their foot in the door and they'd be like Bethesda. Now. Yeah, and what's the ir- irony of that too is that the whole reason the PlayStation came around from Sony was because Sony and Nintendo, and there's concept art out there for it, were were collaborating on a console after the Super Nintendo. And that whole thing fell through, so Sony was like, well, fine, we'll just do it on our own. So because Nintendo dumped Sony and Sony made their own, it put a nail in the coffin for Panasonic. And I guess at the end, Sony Sony kind of won out on that, didn't they? And well, I guess so. Yeah. The, but the thing about Panasonic, since I had worked for them, their uh, beginning manufacturer, Konosuke Matsushita, started out with light bulbs after a World War too and he was trying to get his business going and he was a really good guy and he liked yeah. all of his workers and he was interested in making sure that they were like remember they were like a family one big extended family which is not the same concept that most businesses have no. today they look at you as a commodity can you be used can we squeeze you dry can we get anything more out of you no bye yeah no that's and that's good too that there's you know i don't i know that the my mom works, works. She just retired from State Farm, and the the company that was when she got hired on to the company that they are today, it's the same thing. They use it was they it was a family thing. You know, we would go out and do the the Trailblazers uh, volleyball tournament for uh, the Special Olympics and do Special Olympics things and all that. And they they now it's it really is. So many of them have just become about like how how much can we how much juice could we squeeze out of this lemon before we just toss it aside. But it's it's cool to hear that from Panasonic because Nintendo was a lot like that too. They Nintendo of of all things started out as a uh, trading card company. They just did toys and trading cards, and then they're like, "Hey, let's try this video game thing." <laughs> and it was this years later, yeah, Mario. yeah. And then same thing. It was you know started in Japan under somebody that's like, "Let's just treat our people good and try some new stuff." So that's really Which cool. Is to, funny, yeah, because we we had to do video game history in grad school because I'm Korean. Game development, but uh, they had this landlord in New York for their for their building where they're housing all their arcade cubicle in you know, arcade cases, whatever. And the landlord was this fat Italian guy that's always come by giving him crap. So they made Mario out of this to kind of mock this guy, <laughs> and then it blew up like super huge. Like that's hilarious. That is amazing. It's a me, a Mario. Also, where is the rent? Yes. <laughs> if you don't have my money by a Friday, I uh, take your thumbs. Something you'll never hear Mario say. Uh, so, okay, so moving on with the game thing. So what would be your favorite of all time, get video game-wise? Do you think? That would be you, Chaw. It's just EQ2. I can't think of anything better that I like than that. I mean... Rusty keeps telling me it's a dead mule and I need to get off of it and I need to come to ESO and I need to do this and I need to do that. And I guess I'll I'll hang on until it crashes and burns. Yeah. She was she did love Fair. one a whole lot. I will say that. Yeah, well, and I think a lot of for a lot of our burnout too was uh the horrible role play community. It was the about. toxic community. Yeah. It's not the really the game, although the what they did to the game was terrible, but it it hurts me. Yeah. <laughs> It was the toxic community that drove me away. I loved the gameplay. I still miss it sometimes. So, but the toxic community made it impossible. Yeah. Well, yeah, the, there is the few people that are left. There are a lot of them that are toxic. You oh, got you cut got, off. Oh, you got cut out. Sorry. The... What I was saying is, is of the people that are left in the game, there are, there are a lot of them who are tech. 
Yeah. Toxic, you cut out. <laughs> Toxic. <laughs> it's all right. Um, so do you do the rating and stuff in that still too? Did you say? I can't or I can't remember if that was before we started recording or after. <laughs> she was one of the most yeah. awesome folks when she would raid with us. She, she Triton still absolutely raider, I believe. adored her. He was, he was just like, can we find her? Because she like <laughs> saves our raid. Cloner. So yeah. Okay, funny story <laughs> on that, and she'll she'll elaborate. We we asked her to go on a silver circle raid because we were trying to do some loyal content. Now now mom here is in some big bad A B raiding guild. And I was rolling with her until I just got tired of raiding in the drama and went full time role player. And we asked her, as like, hey, we've known anybody. I was like, hey, let me get my mom in here, we'll be fine. So we get her in there. These mobs were thrashing our little RP bus to death. She walked in and as an enchant or what would they call the enchanter and illusionist. Uh, illusionist. She's yeah. like smoking it solo style. We're all like, oh my goodness, we're not worthy. And she's like mm-hmm. cackling in the other room. This is one of my undergrad years, and I'm just like, my goodness, when your mom is smoking you in a raid, like this should be a horrible <laughs> meme. She's You're not making worthy. you look bad. <laughs> oh yeah, Triton was just like, I want her every raid. Oh <laughs> my god, this poor man, because he was he was in raiding content and he did a lot of raiding, but he was absolutely determined to drag us role players. Kicking, kicking and, and screaming, screaming into raiding. <laughs> <laughs> Poor bastard. Although, and, and the best one here, and I'm sure Chala will find this really funny. Um, we were in the middle of a raid. We had joined a raid guild that needed extra people. Um, they were hardcore raiders, but they were patient and they were taking us into it. And, and one of them was this very nice young lady who <laughs> tried very hard to be a healer. Um, but this was back <laughs> before they made it overly simple and you had to like build it remember those lovely days when you could actually construct your tune Mm -hmm. um and she sends me a tell a a whisper because he had put her in another group instead of with me like she usually was my off healer and she was like they think i'm a healer (laughs) sweetie you are a healer no i'm dps no you're not (laughs) was one of those moments when i thought about chala and I was like, we really need more of her and less of her. <laughs> <laughs> if we're ever going to do this. <sighs> That's very sweet of you. I remember that. It was a lot of fun. I went in there and helped y'all out. And I'm like, well, y'all need anything else? Oh, yeah. We tossed her into the tank group because she was keeping all his power <laughs> up. There you go. You yep. get her. Oh, that's awesome. It was. Your mom is so much cooler than mine, Strafay. I could say that because <laughs> my mom never is, listens man. to anything I do. He's a rare spawn mom. <laughs> that's She's definitely for sure. Yeah. Back in the day, that's the key. If you're Trekkie way back in the original series, probably going to have an ass awesome mom. I'm just saying. Oh, okay. Well, here's something for you, uh, Mama Die for you. Have you watched the new uh, Discovery stuff? Star Trek? Some of it. Some of it, yeah. What do you think on that? Out of curiosity. I, I saw the, uh, the first trailer of... Uh, are we talking about uh, Picard coming but, back? No, oh, no, no, no not Picard. The paid, pay PB, pay the, CBS. The yeah, the one watching that's Discovery. Like the oh no, I've only more... seen the I've only seen the uh, intros for that. I haven't uh, okay. really watched it. But, but how about Picard though? Like, does that not look? Freaking that awesome? <laughs> really does look intriguing, and I have a pet theory that that girl who was trying to pull him in must be a love child between the Borg Queen and himself. <laughs> uh, they did. Oh, they yeah. did show that flash of the Borg in there. You know they when did. he was Lacutus. Yeah. Lacutus. Lacutus. Hey, they got seven Lacutus. and nine, in it, man. Yeah, and the, yeah, they brought in uh, Jer- Jerry Ryan, which Jerry was Ryan. she was one of the cool. You know, the sex appeal reason they brought her in originally. She ended up being one of like the coolest characters in all of Voyager. I would have liked her a lot better without the cat suit. Okay, and, but other than that, right? Yes. Yeah. And she was a great character. So yeah, I'm. I uh, since she you, you mentioned her being the Trekkie fan, I had to had to ask. But I will say though, the Discovery itself, the you know, it's kind of a prequel and kind of goes off the J J Abrams way of looking at it, uh, at least style wise, is actually pretty good. I'm surprised it. At first, it feels like a little bit of a like a, an action packed movie. Actually, Siv came in and was like, "What movie are you watching?" It's like it's a TV show. It just looks that good. But if you, it, it's, I would say it's worth if the, uh, the fifteen dollars a month to like spend it and then plow through now two seasons of it, 
and then you'd be and then cancel it. That's what I did. Actually, the first season, I think I did their seven day free trial, burned through it, and then canceled because it's only like eight or nine episodes. But if, if you're a Trek fan, I'd say it's worth it's worth a look. I'd have to I'd have to at least go that far. You'll know right off with the first couple episodes if you're into it or not. All right. Well, thanks for the info. Yeah. But uh, well, um, anybody have anything else to add or uh, a- ask? Feel free. I mean, this is, we're just kind of kind of towards the end now, so. Just thank you for all yes, of your you. uh, help over the years and being there and for good laughs against Strafe and also just in general. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, <laughs> Real friends, you don't need enemies, guy. I'm telling you. Uh, oh. We really enjoyed when you would come on as my, Mama Darfir. It was always a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was always a lot of fun, too. I always liked yeah. it because we would... We would go at it, and he was like, runs away. Yeah, it was so much fun. Vacarina absolutely adored Mama Dire Fear. So it was it was always a lot of fun. Um, and you have been one of my inspirations, as you and one other person from EQ2, by the way, that also got published, oh. um, that I I follow him on, on Facebook, and I've always kept track of your books, and, and he fills me in on now that you got another book coming, and I keep waiting because I want to get it. So, <laughs> well, I'm I love it as to earth, Sean. Good. I can't wait to read it. It's going to be awesome. My favorite um, line from it is uh, if he does something truly admirable, and I'll say no more. I'll let mom do it. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the lines. It seemed like it really impressed him when he read that. He's like, oh, oh of course, it's because he yeah. that's how Red Gods talks. So, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Well, what it was. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you're right. It was one, one last question. It's from Great Roop Dini. He was wondering what your favorite book is. Of all time? I, right now? Or when I was in school? What? Probably. Let's go with all time. Gotta Dead be Tolkien. Silence. Gotta be Tolkien. Tolkien. <laughs> I figured Lord it, of the Rings. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Figured that's what it would be. I mean, given that that was the influence and all that, I thought that might be it. But just in case, you know, it could be like, you know, uh, a cat in the hat. I don't know. I mean, I'm being the literary giant that I am. That is obviously <laughs> my favorite book. Um, <laughs> I mean, it is. What about book. Green Eggs and Ham, bro? I mean, that one's solid. No, I mean, it's it's got it's I, I don't even want to go into the problems with Green Eggs and Ham. Uh, just all just right. on a intellectual basis. It's it's just we don't have that kind of time. <laughs> <laughs> but no thank you very much mama dire fear for coming on here that was really thank you awesome for inviting me yeah i'm glad yes, it was awesome glad you're so willing much. to and i'm glad to you've uh, i mean i if i have to say something nice thanks for not raising a serial killer yeah <laughs> hey although he kind of is as far as we know <laughs> no he's he's a good guy i'm actually very he's glad awesome. to have known Strafe yes. through I meant through the Keely. He was a he was a mm-hmm. Jazz killer. just keep Friend digging God's. that hole. <laughs> <laughs> well, <he was. laughs> no, you're right. But no, thank you very much for coming on and uh answering all our questions and I I honestly I wish you nothing but the best of luck. I really hope this new thank publisher you. and your your next book when they come out. I'm actually I I've got a uh, Kindle somewhere, so now I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to download the book and read it, which is something I've not done. I, I I'm a huge fan of, like I said, audiobooks because I don't have a lot of time to read. But well, you may get one the mail for me. I'm just saying. Well, yeah, the- but I don't want to like I want to keep that one, so I'll, I'll read I'll read the other one. Oh, okay. But I don't want to I don't I want to you know I want to keep that pristine, Cause especially if it, if it all goes well. You know I gotta you know I could be like yeah. You don't have well. This. It it is interesting that the marketing guy said that uh, my book was in such demand that they actually spent an exorbitant amount to get a used one, and that one was one that I had given to a coworker, and uh, he subsequently got a little miffed at me for one reason or another, and then he put it up there and he figured he was going to sell it for thirty bucks and see if he could get it, and apparently it must have sold. I thought well, that was kind of interesting, but well, the guy go. said that there was a demand for my book, and I'm like. Yeah, right. It's it's is it a it's a weird thing though, isn't that when when it it sounds like you have a problem a lot of people do where uh you don't know how to take a compliment. Is that a, is that That's is that a been thing? a lifelong thing. Yeah. I mean, people tell me I'm pretty and I'm like, "Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> What's your standard?" <laughs> yeah. 
It's I I I I think I can understand. I mean, I'm not that I've ever been told I'm pretty. That has never happened. But I've been told a lot of four Nor will words. It ever. Yeah, I mean, dang, I, from my wife's mouth to God's ear, hey bro. never. <laughs> I think you're a pretty, dude. It is what it is, right? I mean, I mean well, well I, I, I've never been, I've never passed off as Legolas. That's for sure. <laughs> that's hey, funny, well, you know. Strafe yeah. certainly I, has. I you know somebody seen him at the Ren Fair calling from across the park, going, <gasps> Legolas. Oh, I could only oh, imagine. <laughs> The especially, memories come flooding back, especially when you had the long hair. Yeah, see me. I was more of a if I if I was a rent fair and I was going to get recognized, it would probably be for something like Gimli. There you go. Yeah, I mean that would the, work. Yeah, it's just you know, the I got the the, the chub and the, the you had those sweet Jedi robes back in the day. I, I did. Saw yeah, of those. yeah, I did. I, I was I was a good for a Jedi, more of a Jedi than a the fantasy guy. But no, thank you again very much and for answering all the questions. And as I said, sure. I really, really hope everything takes off for you because that would thank you. be be nothing but awesome. And then we, you know, maybe even though we've only got one episode left of this show, eventually we'll be doing another one. So, yeah, we okay. can I just say real quick? Absolutely not. I was looking on Amazon, and uh, there's only three copies of the uh, paperback. Yeah, it says available. Used. Yeah, and it's. Uh, one's thirteen or two of them are thirteen fifty. The last one's fifty bucks. <laughs> there you awesome. go. Out of, I mean, it's got a four and a half star review. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I was and looking I, at. Yeah, and the I'm one kind of the uh, it's, it's sex so person. <laughs> he's got a stack of paperbacks here. Anyway, yeah. Well, you know, I I really don't understand this because when I was talking to the marketing director, he said that they were overpricing it because they knew it was a good book and they wanted to make a lot of money, so they were being greedy. Because I said. Shouldn't this be like a regular paperback price? Oh, no, no. This is a stock price. It's got to be this price. And that it doesn't sound like kinda, a very small, smart no. marketing at all. No, no. I think they really shot themselves in the foot because had it been a little cheaper, people probably would have uh, jumped on it and, and looked it over and had it. But, you know. What and then do say? a second printing and then, and then yeah. Exactly. And then you get all your stuff. Yeah. it's. And now it's to a second printing and I'm hoping the second printing will be much more successful. It's supposed to retail for eight ninety nine for what I'm I was told, which is a much more reasonable price yeah. for paperback. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or even I was gonna say even the reviews are good. Mm-hmm. I mean I'm sitting here I'm like I'm the spec person, like I said. I like to go and read all the reviews and I mean there's not a bad one. So Mm-mm. no, even the lowest one is still like it's still better than I could ever do. <laughs> you know mm-hmm. like, yeah, right. <laughs> it's easy to say it's easy it's as long i always it's as long as you're given constructive criticism it's one of the the, sure. the ones that are always like yeah your writing's bad and you should feel bad okay well why because i'm on the internet <laughs> all right well yeah. your opinion is yeah. worth less than it's a fart. not an easy thing for in you know it's not for everybody no and you really do have to have a good imagination yeah you know kind of a grasp of where you want to take it and I think it's, I think it's wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you because a lot of people have an idea and they don't know how to push it to make it bloom and grow. Yeah. Uh, yeah so okay, I'm sorry. I know I we're trying to we were going to go out, but I just thought of one more question. Uh, <laughs> when it comes to the level, like you had said before, the level of detail. Where do you where do you think the because one of the problems we come into with a lot of role players and, and things like that is they're... The brick texture. Right. Well, they're either that or the other. The, that one's not so bad. The brick text is not terrible if you're writing a story. But one of the things it seems like a lot of writers starting out are will, aren't willing to do is they get embarrassed. And so they low... The, even though their mind is coming up with more detail... They lowball themselves and then just, you know, instead of saying, you know, nods courteously, they just do, you know, nod. And just cut, you know, they don't go into more detail, even though something might need more detail. What do you think kind of the, the way? I think they're probably cutting is? corners or they already think because they understand it that everybody else does. And that's why I try to put a lot of detail in there so that I can put you in there. So you feel like you're walking in the book too. You're waiting, just waiting for your turn to. Yeah. Okay. And I, I totally agree with that. I know he mentioned our daughter has wrote a book and 
I've been reading her book and discussing it with her. And I told her just recently, you need to make people want to invest their time into this. Make them, because she's, I told her, I was like, there's not enough meat on the bone. And so she was, you know, she was like, oh, really? And I'm like, yeah. So, it, you know, I think a lot of people don't realize that they've got to give you, like you said, you want to be able to walk with the character through the story. Yeah. And just and because you know what's going on accomplish in the head. that. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what's going on. You know the whole story in your own head. So you forget to put the details in to let the reader know, oh, yeah, by the way, this is something you should probably know, too. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't do that, then they're lost because then they go a couple of chapters and they're like, what was that exactly? Did Maybe I, I need to go I back to and do read that it. a lot. Yeah. Did I, I hate skip that. a chapter? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Sorry. I, I said a lot in Tolkien. I'd be like, what? Page, 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 page. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> But, all right, well, cool. I just That's just something that popped in my head there real quick. But, again, thank you very much for coming on. Yes. It's been awesome to get to meet you awesome. and know you. Um, it's, I don't know, I can't really th- say anything more than that. It's just been really cool to meet you after all these. I've heard so much about you, and, mm-hmm. and here you are. Well, hopefully, if uh, surviving does as well as I hope it does, then you'll have me back, and we can talk about our as- I look forward to it. I really, really, I guess, yeah, nothing but the best, and I, I can't wait for that to happen because it will have to. If you haven't, uh, if you haven't, re- don't remember, it's uh, over on Amazon, Surviving the Waning. Uh, you can get it on the e-reader or paperback. Uh, Janice Ayers is her name, or Mama Dire Fear, for those that, you know, know her intimately as we do. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I did post it. I posted the link that Strafe posted in the uh, Twitch chat too. Yeah. Oh, oh nice. There you go. Uh, I think great. Dini asked for it, so yep. I put it in. That'll work. So, well, I want to thank, thank you again. You. No, you're absolutely welcome. Thank you for coming on. Awesome. Thank but you. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, remember, you can follow us over at twitchtv radio or subscribe, whatever. Uh, we are, of course, a podcast. You can find us on iTunes, Podbean, uh, anywhere an Android podcast app is at, uh, Spotify. We're basically everywhere. Um, so with that, I want to thank everybody on my crew, uh, Jazz Sibs, Trafay, Yunfei, Mama Bye, Direfield. Guys. Once again, Night, thank folks. you very much. Later, thank you. Night, everybody. And- Night. <laughs> <laughs> you know how much he hates that. It's great. Anyway, That's Bye. all right. I'm used to it. <laughs> I, of course, am Ash and Phoenix, and tune in next time when we'll go over why halflings will never be published because nothing they say is interesting. Next time on RPMMO Radio. Play on and keep the roleplay going. Music, as always, is provided by Husky by the Geek. Visit him at youtube.com slash huskybythegeek to hear all his great video game raw covers and original music.